Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. And today I thought I would paint a primula or a primrose for you. So here is the blossom. I've got many different colors in the garden, but I thought this yellow was so pretty. And let's see if I can give you a super close up. So there, there's what it looks like. So all these, all these petals are kind of fused together a little bit. Well, actually, they, it looks like they're fused together, together, but they're not. So there are six petals. The reason it looks like they're fused together is because it's a little bit damp. It's been raining here for the last couple of days. And if it hadn't been raining so hard today, I would have gone out and dug up the plant so that I could have painted the whole thing, which I, which I may do. If I can get my hands on a yellow primula at the, at the nursery, I may go ahead and use that as the subject for this month's Watercolor Card Club. And if you're interested in the Watercolor Card Club, just go to dandeliancottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes, and I will be able to send you the notification about how to sign up for the Watercolor Card Club. It's a, it's a subscription, and it's $25, and each month we paint a different subject, and it includes a video tutorial, as well as enough materials to make four different note cards. But for today, since I had to, to run outside, dash out, and just cut off a leaf and a flower, that's what I'm going to be working from. I also have my watercolors handy. So here they are. I've got red, yellow, and blue. And I've got a couple of paint brushes. So this is a sable paint brush. This is a number seven. And I also have a number four for getting in the little details. I'll be using a number two pencil and a kneaded rubber eraser. And I'm also going to be using today hot press paper and I'm going to be painting this as a vertical. I'm just going to arrange my flower. Just letting it hug the edge of that cup. And I'll put a leaf. All right, so that is my subject. And I'm gonna leave a, a little bit of space, oops, a little bit of space on the bottom for a, um, a sentiment. So I'm just gonna keep this very simple in the upper portion of my paper here. Off to the side, I've got two different containers of water. These are pint-sized deli containers, and I also have a damp kitchen sponge that has only been ever used for painting. It's, there's no grease or soap in it. It's been carefully rinsed. I'm just checking my settings and make sure we're live and we are and I see Kelly and Christine hello ladies thank you for joining me today here we go all right so just drawing very very lightly and um, I will zoom you in after a while but just let I just want you to be able to see the flower 
as I begin. I'm just very faintly sketching in those petals and, um, and getting the center. So, and then I'm, I'm, I'm indicating where the center vein is so I can get them all in their appropriate positions. So there we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's very important to understand how many petals your specimen has because it changes from species to species. And one of the things that I really love about the primulas that makes them so distinctive are these wonderful leaves with, with all this texture. So there's a very prominent center vein that's quite wide at the base and tapers to a very fine point. And then there are, they're almost like alligator skin all these lateral veins, which are then each, each section is each divided by even more crinkles and ruffles and bumps and ridges, and they're just fantastic. So you could do a wonderful leaf study if any of you have primulas out in your, in your garden or even in your supermarket, grab a couple of them, bring them inside. Um, this time of year, the supermarkets often have them for very reasonable prices. You, you, can, you can get several different ones in different colors. But just do a, do a study of a leaf, of a single leaf. They're just wonderful. And um, if you've already taken my watercolor course, you, you then have a basic understanding of how to model the form. And, um, and you can just really go to town on each of these areas. So I know you can't see that very well, so let me zoom you in now. Now you can see a little bit, okay? And um, the other thing that's important, and I'm sorry if I'm getting my head in the camera here because I'm getting very close to the flower, but you want to make sure that you can see which petals overlap the other petals. So this petal is on top here. And then this petal comes out from underneath it. And this one overlaps this one. And this one is actually under both of them because this one is also on top. just make sure yes so that's on top of this petal as well and then this one is way under and this one pops up and comes out and the um, the edges of these flowers are wonderfully ruffled and some of them have this little kind of a divot in the center. So pretty. Make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. Now, um, let me give this leaf a little more TLC.
so Tello, he's, um, he's back in the house again. He's not doing so well. He's actually been having seizures, and I don't know what causes seizures. Maybe some of you have a medical background out there, and you can tell me what causes these uh, rather violent seizures. So I don't know. I don't know if he's going to ever be able to uh, go back outside again. When um, when I hear that he's starting to have a seizure, I grab him if I'm home, and I hold him until it passes because he can. Um, he's already scratched up his face with his claws. I've I've trimmed his claws so that they're not so sharp, but I'm so afraid he's going to rip one of his eyes out. So if anybody has any ideas about any kind of herbal remedies or um, or even what causes them, I'd be happy to know. All right, so there is the beginning. Now this, these are going to be my dominant uh, flower and leaf, but then I'm going to add another leaf and I'm just drawing this out of my head using the um, the specimen leaf and I'll put a, a flower so what you can do is when you have just one specimen is you can hold it sideways so you can see what it looks like from the side and then you can just add that view as if you were looking at, a, at another flower. That way you can draw a bouquet with as many flowers as you, as you like for your design. Maybe I'll have something else over here. Remember, I want to keep some um, space here for the sentiment. Okay, that's enough of that for now. And I'm just going to, if I take my kneaded eraser and pull on it gently. By the way, if you need a watercolor kit, um, I will send you, if you don't want to go out and buy all the supplies, which can add up if you, if you get, um, you know, a full palette of colors and a palette and so forth and so on. If you just want to have something to get started with. I have a kit available that includes a kneaded eraser, the three colors squeezed out onto a mini plastic palette, and a set of the water painter brushes, which are the brushes with the, I'll show you, the brushes with the um, reservoir in the handle. Let me just grab those so you can see what I'm talking about. So 
So they come in a pack of, of three and three different sizes. One is a flat, the other two are rounds, and there's the brush with the water in the handle. Okay, so that includes, that's included in the kit as well as a pack of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And you can find out all about that also when you subscribe to Notes. By the way, I want to thank you all again for liking and subscribing my channel on YouTube because we're up over, well over a thousand now. I think it's something like 1.3 um, thousand subs and, uh, and I'm just so excited about it. So thank you, thank you so much and um, being so supportive and for um, leaving such nice comments. I really appreciate it. Okay, so there's my sketch. I'm just going to take a, um, a light wash now. I'm, I'm using my yellow and I've got it diluted very much. So it's super light and I'm just going to go over everything with a light wash. including the leaves. I'm staying away from the center vein of the leaves because that is such a pale color. I'm just going to let the paper be um, show for the, for the vein. I'm just going to lift out this this one which I painted in. There we go. Now, when something I, I like to do on occasion, particularly with these lighter colored flowers, is I like to remove the excess graphite or the pencil lines. And um, so once this is pretty dry, it's better, of course, if you wait till it's completely dry, but because of the live video, I'm just gonna go ahead and very carefully go in with my rubber eraser and I'm just going to remove as much of those lines as I can. Where the where I painted over the line it's going to be permanent but wherever the lines were not painted over I can erase easily or at least lighten. Now I don't I don't mind it so much in the leaves, that's fine. But with these very pale yellow flowers, especially these side ones. There we go. And I don't even know if you can see that. It's a it's a very subtle thing. All right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to start working on my, my main flower here. Let me see if I can do this without getting a shadow on the paper. And I'm going to begin darkening some of these areas where the shadows are.
so there's the beginning. Let's see some comments here. Good morning. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Carol. Thank you all for joining. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great week so far. Oh, what's happening to my focus there? Come back. There we go. All right, and so now I'm going to uh, put a little pale wash of green on my leaves, and for this I'm going to keep it very much on the, the yellow side to begin with. So just a little bit of blue, just a very pale, kind of a spring green. Now this is the this is the kind of subject that I really like to take my time on. So I'm not going to be able to paint the entire thing for you this this afternoon, but what I will do is show you how I get started. So what I can do is I can just kind of indicate some of these other leaves and flowers, but I'll just I'll just um, work on one to give you an idea of how you can achieve the, the same results. Okay, so you can see that there's, there's very little, hardly any blue in this mixture. Now I'm adding a little bit more, a little more paint, so a little more yellow and a little more blue to make a, a stronger green. And I'm just going to indicate some of these veins, get those started. And some of the, the wonderful shape or texture that this leaf has. There we go.
always take the time to look at the back or the bottom of the flowers because it's so interesting. Everyone, see that? Everyone is different. And there's so much fun to paint. There we go. All right, so, so that's sort of the, the beginning. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue adding more paint and more color. So richer color, thicker paint is what I'm trying to say here. And I'm just going to go into these shadow areas. The, um, this kind of, of painting and the primula, for some reason, is reminding me of Beatrix Potter, who wrote all those wonderful little books about Peter Rabbit and uh, Squirrel Nutkin and all the rest. And she was quite the accomplished watercolor painter. And when she wasn't writing and uh, illustrating children's books, she was doing all sorts of botanical watercolors, especially mushrooms, and did quite a few. And um, for those of you who uh, haven't visited my Pinterest page, check it out. Um, it's, it's called Dandelion, D-A-N-D-L-I-O-N, Cottage. And on there is a board for just, um, what's it called? I think it's called um, Nature Watercolors or something like that. You'll, you'll see it. Anyway, uh, there are many hundreds of watercolors throughout history that I have posted there, and among them are some of Beatrix Potter's paintings, and they're simply stunning. And um, I think I, th I find that collection of paintings on my Pinterest board to be incredibly inspiring. So check that out. Let me know if you find it or if you have any trouble finding it, and, um, and I will post the link. All right, let's get back to my blossom here. I just want to get the, this beautiful little starry center. And I'm going to need a color for the shadow on the petals. So I'm mixing up a very, very cool faint violet, kind of a blue-violet color, and I'm putting a little bit of the yellow in there to give me a, um, a gray, and this is very diluted, and I can use this 
to go into some of these places where the petals overlap. And I'm using my, my number four brush now for this detail work. Right now I'm just going to add some darks. So I'm going back to my leaves. I'm getting some nice rich green. This time it has quite a bit of blue in it. I hope you can see this okay. I see that there's quite a bit of glare and I'm not sure why that's happening. So, um, it seems to come and go. It's a, you know, these, like I said, it's a rainy day here and these, um, sometimes the, the cloud cover makes for the brightest kinds of days. All right, now I'm gonna go back into some of these areas and put in the, it's almost like a checkerboard texture. And then it gets very tiny. The sections get very tiny at the tip here.
Now I'm going into my my yellow and I'm making a little um, pale glaze and I'm just going to run that right over the top of this section. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Now, um, that's the that's the painting fairly well established, and now um, now I can go back into it and just make any little corrections that I may want to do. Yeah, the yellows are cadmiums. So the cadmium family of colors is a very intense, very um, beautifully rich family of, of reds, oranges, and yellows. And um, when you use them full strength, they're, they're almost opaque, but you can thin them down so that you can create a beautiful veil of a, <clears throat> excuse me, of a glaze over your painting as well. Now I just want to tuck in some accents, so I'm mixing some red and some blue together to create that blue-violet. And then I'm using that with the dark green. So I'm just making a little more dark green here. I'm running out. There we go. So if I add a little bit of that violet to the, to the dark green, that's going to give me a nice dark accent that I can put in these shadow areas.
we go. All right, and then finally, I'm gonna look more closely at the center of my flower, and I can see some little stamens in there. So I'm just going to see if I can indicate those. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Maybe one bright stroke of yellow. There we go. All right, so let's put our card together. I'm going to be using the old olive cardstock as a mat for this. Although now that I'm looking at it, maybe maybe a um, garden green would have been better. Just blending these edges a little bit more. I want this to be a nice soft gradation. There we go. Okay. So I have here, let me zoom you out, I have here a piece of the very vanilla cardstock thick as a base. So this is a standard, um, what is it, A2 size, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. Actually, I have to look that up. I, I don't know if A2 refers to the 8.5 by 11 or the 5.5 by 4 and a quarter, but um, it's the standard size card that fits our medium envelope, so I'll get out one of those as well. And using the liquid glue, just running a, a fine bead of glue around the edge, dash in the center. my bone folder, give that a nice firm burnish. Get my fold nice and flat. There we go. And this is still a little bit damp. 
So I'm going to wait to mount it until it's dry because um, before I do that, I want to go back over it with my kneaded eraser and remove any other pieces of um, lines of graphite. But I don't want to do that while it's damp because I would smear it, so that would be a bad thing. So there's my card, an envelope, and then I also have a little Happy Mother's Day that I punched out using the double oval punch and the old olive, and that's going to fit very nicely there. Okay, so that's it for today. Folks, this is the beautiful primula, or the spring primrose. And if you're interested in learning more about either my beginning watercolor class or the watercolor card club, please subscribe to notes at dandeliancottagedesign.com and you will get on the mailing list and I will begin to send you the announcements for all the things that I have coming right up. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay happy, and stay creative. And if you do go out and get yourself a beautiful little primula from the supermarket and paint a picture, please post it so I can see it. I'd love to see what you do. And, um, and that's it for today. I'll see you again on Saturday at 12 noon Eastern, Sta Eastern Standard Time for Paper Crafting Saturday.